Let's talk about plain old telephones and plain old telephone service, which you oftentimes called POTS. So the difference between a modern phone and a plain old telephone is a plain old telephone is electrically compatible with the phone service and phone system that's been in use, as I understand it, since far before I was born, like a hundred years ago, maybe even longer. Even those old hand crank uh, wall phones that you see in old black and white movies still worked electrically, again, as I understand it, the same as these uh, home, uh, like a, a, a landline, we call a landline phone. Those are POTS phones, okay? Modern ones are digital phones. They work very differently. Uh, plain old telephones basically work in, in a single pair of wires. Now, this phone is, I think, actually a British phone or something. I got this in the 70s, like when I was in high school. A buddy of mine used to always go to these uh, places where they would do like liquidations of, of stuff. And I thought this looked cool. So I just got it. I had no idea it would actually work, but of course it does, right? The worldwide, all phones prior to going digital pretty much work the same way. So, uh, this was like a 1960s era British style phone. Uh, gotta wonder if, uh, maybe you see one in the background of a James Bond movie or something. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, when I got this thing, I uh, I actually used this in college for uh, several years, you know, uh, and on a modern system, you need one of these RJ11 style connectors. This phone would have originally come with a, a regular old wire coming out of here with like hard wires in it and meant to be hard, you know, connected in on screw terminals in the wall or something like that. So I took that wire off and I put this one on. Now, the difference between the hardwired and this uh, funky connector here, what, what, what this is, is it looks like a very small version of, like, you know, an Ethernet Cat5 cable or something. And if you look closely, I don't know how, there you go. I can sort of get it in focus in the depth of field. Oh, get this out of the way. I made a better picture over here. There you go. You can sort of see them there. There's uh, four little shiny metal things on there. It's the center two uh, pins in this cable that we care about. The outer two on this particular phone are not used for anything at all. If you had a phone that had two lines, and sometimes you have a little twisty knob on here, so line A and line B, that's what the other two pair of wires would be for. Or some phones had lights on them and stuff, and you pick it up, you can see the, the, the push buttons or something at night. The other two pair, uh, the other two connectors, I should say, would be used in that case to provide uh, power to light up the uh, the light bulbs and stuff. Now, this is a dual RJ45 connector, which I'm going to use to demonstrate the phone because it breaks these out into these screw terminals and stuff. Now, this is an RJ11. These are RJ45s. I don't know how well this will look in here, if I can get it to the line up. As you can see here, the RJ11 is not the same size as an RJ45. It doesn't want to really, it's too too small. But it turns out that this little uh, clippy thingy on here, right, the little uh, springy thing that lines up with this notch right there will still hold it in the middle. So even if you stick it in a connector that's too big, it'll go in there, and it just won't use the outer uh, most four pins. Two on this side and two on that side won't connect, and the other four in the middle will connect, all right? That's one of the benefits of this dial connector, all right? So just so you understand what's going on here. Now, on the other side of this connector here, there's these eight screws that go to each of the eight pins that would be on the RJ45. The four on the RJ11 are these four uh, screws down here, and this red wire and the green wire, I don't know how well the, the color is going to show up on this camera here, if I get it up really close, maybe. All right, so it turns out these two screws way up here, right, have the red and the green wire. That's the middle two uh, pins on this cable. And those are the wires that go to this phone. And all we really need to do, you can do this with a 9-volt battery. You can do it with just about anything. Uh, I've got my power supply, my bench supply here set up for 12 volts. This is, of course, DC. And these resistors I put on here just for safety, they're 180 ohms. If you take a 9-volt battery or something on here and you just connect the 9-volt battery up to these two pins, it will also work just fine. No need for a resistor. You use the resistor in case you short this thing out or something. You don't want to fry your bench supply or something like that. And these are just 180 ohms. Why? Because that's what I had lying around. I've heard some Bell Tell uh, linesman guys say, use a kilo-ohm resistor. 
Um, but they also suggest that you hook up the right voltage on here. Now, the phone company runs it at 48 volts. I'm running this at 12, and I happen to know it'll work at 9 if you have an old 9-volt battery. I mean, this the 48 volts is very nominal, uh, and it can vary a lot. Now, remember that this style of phone was designed to be plugged into a connector in your house, and you could be up to three miles away from the phone company. So the length of this wire right here could be three miles. Now think about that. It's three miles with two wires. So it's three miles out to your phone and then three miles back. That's a total of six miles of wire. There's a lot of voltage drop in that amount of wire, okay? So the 48 volts that they speak of is nominally the voltage that's applied in the central office. So the voltage in your house could be you know, all over the place, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up the... Um, the power supply to these two pins. Now, uh, there's a formal uh, polarity to this, and I probably got it wrong. It, it turns out it'll work either way, whether the voltage is, you know, black here and red there, you know, positive and negative or negative and positive. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it will work either way. Uh, so if you take your, your, your 12 volts here in my ground there and you just connect it to the middle two pins, pick up your phone, put it up to your head, and hello, I can hear myself in the phone here, all right? Now, that's not too much fun, and it's hard to demonstrate with the microphone in the, uh, in the shop here. So what I've got here is a two-connector block, as you saw. And if I don't drop all the parts all over the floor, here's another phone, okay? An AT&T 130, which is uh, only 25 years old phone, I guess. Still an antique by today's standards, but it's a POTS phone, and that's the key here. Now, this is a dial tone, uh, a touch tone phone, and this is obviously a rotary phone. So in this scenario, what I'm going to do here, look how these wires are set up. Two phones. These phones are actually going to be wired in series. So what I've got here is the ground wire, the 12 volts is going to be spread across both of these phones. The the power is going to come into the green wire here, go to this phone, come back out of this phone by the red wire. Then I'm going to put a wire here and jump right over to the green wire right here, okay? Then it's going to go into this phone, come back out of that phone, and go back into the power supply over there. So here's our little jumper wire, a little gator clip there, and a little gator clip over here. Now, we've got it all set up. So I'm going to take this phone, and I'm going to put it up to the microphone. And I'm going to take this phone up and say, hello. And now we get back to the, uh... <laughs> hello. <laughs> so you can, I guess you can't hear when I'm talking and when I'm dialing at the same time. But uh, you get the picture here, okay? Now what happens is I can talk in one phone here the other way and the other way around. This is actually what we would call an intercom style setup. So you have two POTS phones, just wire the, the, the two connectors in series like I've done here, throw nine volts, anything from probably even five volts, nine volts to 48 volts DC uh, on them, and you'll be able to uh, have an intercom line. Run a uh, wire over to your neighbor's house or whatever. If you're a kid or something, that might be uh, you know a whole lot of fun, a private uh, phone link to your buddy's house. Uh, much cooler in 1982, uh, before we had cell phones. But, you know, a hardwired phone is a lot more secure than a cell phone. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, okay, so that's really how these things work. Now, how do you ring the phones? Now, ringing a phone is a wee bit more on the dangerous side. And once again, I'm not going to use the nominal official operating voltage, which is 90 volts DC, okay? They pulse a signal at 90 volts to ring the phone. I happen to know it'll work fine at 25 volts, right? My old uh, Radio Shack transformer here, what was this? There's a price for you. I don't know how readable that is on the camera, but I can see it's four. To, oh, is it $6.29. Find this thing for $6.29. Even at Radio Shack prices, which were or outrageous back in the day, uh, today this is still a good deal. And of course, this is, you know, 40 some years old. I probably bought this in the 70s. Now, this over here is not really necessary. It's an EMI filter. I only have it because this transformer has these uh, spades on it or lugs to go on to spades. And it's just a handy thing for me to use to connect them to. Uh, I don't know. This was part of a project at one point. 
and I found this and I said, well, I can just hook that up and I got a regular line cord here so I can use this to do this demonstration here. All right, so now the way this is supposed to work is you're supposed to have the DC voltage on the phone. That's basically there all the time. And in order to ring the phone, what the central office would do is go from your 48 volts up to the 90 volts with a big pulse, and then back to 48, and then pulse it back to 90, back to 48. And we do these pulses at about 20 hertz, 20 times a second, okay? Now, I don't have a pulse generator that works at the right frequency that'll generate the right amperage. However, if I just simply plug this into the wall here, in my shop, I'm gonna get 25 volts AC at 60 hertz out of this. Now you're gonna tell, if you're from the US, you'll hear the difference in the way the phone will ring because each one of the individual pulses will cause the phone to ding one time. So uh, if you've ever heard a real phone ring, you'll notice this phone's gonna ring a little bit faster, about three times as fast as it would normally ring because I'm running it at 60 hertz rather than 20. But it will ring and it will work even at 25 volts. Now I'm not gonna hook up the DC and the pulses at the same time, and I will wreck my bench power supply. Uh, the reason they run both at the same time is because the way the central office figures out that the phone has been lifted up is it constantly watches the impedance on the line. As it is hung up, it has a very high impedance. There's nothing really connected to it. And the ringer is like capacitively coupled to the line. So there's really no current flowing through the circuit when your phone is what we call on hook. When the when the when the when the headset is is set down here, uh, causing the uh, hook to be pressed down. All right, it's it's hung up. Okay. Now, if I simply pick up the phone, it will put these uh, speaker and the mic in the circuit, and the impedance will go down. It'll start drawing current, and they'll sense this, and they'll go, "Aha! The guy must have picked up the phone," and they'll start playing a dial tone so I can hear. Uh, and know that I've got connected to the office. I can start dialing and all that other fun stuff, okay? Um, if I don't pick up and they ring the phone, and that's kind of what we're messing with here, um, what happens is when this is pulsing and you pick up the phone, the DC current will flow and they'll detect it even while the phone is ringing, or more accurately, between successive individual pings of the bell at the 90 volt, or in my case, 25 volt uh, ringing pulses, right? Between those, it'll sense the current and stop the ringing, okay? Now, I would actually have to build a circuit to do all that, and I'm not gonna do that. So uh, I'm just gonna ring it as a demonstration here. You wanna build a circuit to do both, you know, you're gonna have to put together the uh, proper, uh, uh, um, you know, voltage controls and stuff like that, which I'm just gonna hook up some gators and plug it in and, and, and see it work here. We'll manually change it back and forth between the two modes, okay? So this is gonna be 25 volts AC directly connected to the phone. You could probably put it through the resistor. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea. You don't wanna you know, wreck your transformer or something. This is gonna be a two amp transformer. Uh, probably not gonna be a problem even if I short it for a little while, all right? Okay, so I'm gonna just plug this in. Make sure if you're gonna do this, don't let these leads, you don't grab it or anything. You don't want 110 in there, so I'm sure we'll be able to hear this thing. All right, so there's your ringing. So they're just big higher volt pulses that cause the bell to ring. And that's all there is to that, all right? So if you want to build an old intercom system, get some old phones, just throw some voltage on, a DC voltage on there and wire them in series. Now, if you want multiple extensions, so to speak, or like two phones in one location and one phone in another, you can parallel up the phones uh, at uh, at by putting you know Y connectors or something in this in this connector here. But you need to have uh, the two locations. You can have multiple phones in one location, multiple phones in another location. But those two locations need to be wired in series, the way I did it in here, where I had in the red and out the green, and then in the red and out the green on the other location, right? And again, put some current limiting resistors in there just to make sure you don't wreck your power supply. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Yeah, press check in aisle five.